Okay, so excuse me, I gotta use my cue cards. I've got way too much to say in way too little time. Okay, so I'm here to clear up some misconceptions about internet memes versus microtrends. The examples are not meant to be taken personally. Excuse the horribly ugly slides you're about to see. Uh, we all love pretty pictures, but this talk is gonna be all substance and no flash. My name's Chris Menning. I'm the community manager of KnowYourMeme.com. I do a good deal of the writing for the Know Your Meme video series, Rocket Boom and Rocket Boom Tech. Yeah. Now, Know Your Meme started off as a spin-off of Rocket Boom in 2007. Then in January of 2009, we launched the Know Your Meme database at KnowYourMeme.com, where anybody can submit any info about any internet meme out there, as long as you're not making shit up. Please, make sure it actually is an internet meme before telling us about us. Uh, at this point, you've all heard that Richard Dawkins coined the term meme to describe the theoretical units of self-replicating culture which spread from mind to mind in a contagious fashion. Uh, at the basis of it, a meme is that which is imitated. But a lot of people overlook the fact that a meme is made up of multiple iterations created by lots of different people. Memes are not just buzz. Uh, internet memes are the participatory creation of user-generated content. That can be a powerful thing. Now, uh, some people often mistake the content or form for a meme rather than the behavior of mimetic participation. Uh, you're probably familiar with these things like Disaster Girl, Dramatic Chipmunk, What Is This I Don't Even, and the Facebook 25 Things About Me. Uh, now, shortly after becoming aware of internet memes, some people make the mistake of asking, how can I make an internet meme? Well, you can't. See, a person can create a concept, make participation easy, set the stage for a meme to form, but you can't guarantee that people will find it interesting enough to participate. At the uh, 2008 Penny Arcade Expo, four guys surprised a number of internet celebs by singing the Bad Horse Chorus from Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Mind you, they weren't trying to make an internet meme, but many blogs said, it's the new Rickroll. They were missing the forest for the trees. Uh, you see, it was not a cluster of contagious imitated behavior spread from mind to mind, but the blogosphere was calling it a meme anyway. So, was it the birth of a meme as they say in the slide? No. Up top we've got the Bad Horse Chorus. At the bottom we compare it to things like Advice Dog and the very obscure 40 Cakes. That tiny little blue bump there, that's the Bad Horse Chorus. So, meme does not equal instant fame buzzword. When you say, let's make this a meme, people are hearing, I am a giant douchebag. Just like every self-proclaimed social media Megan Google rock star that will try to get you so many followers that nobody pays attention to what you're saying. An example is how on September 11th, 2009, the topless robot blog humiliated a furry fan fiction writer by re reprinting a story uh, sexualizing a Pokemon. He was upset and his grammar sucked. He said, who's responsible for this? The conditions were right. He was talking about furries, Pokemon, weird sexual acts with Pokemon, fan fiction, humiliation, powerful elements that could become a meme. But Sean T. Collins, a friend of the editor of Topless Robot, wrote the following on his blog. It's an all your base all belong to us waiting to happen. I'm working it into my repertoire immediately. The next time I'm outraged by someone on the internet, I'm damn well gonna try to find out who's responsible this. Then all of Sean's friends who were bloggers and publicists all declared that it was a big meme, but in the, in the, in the wild it was uh, outright rejected. People said memes should happen naturally. I live literally seen three separate articles this morning how this is the next big meme. Sorry, doesn't work like that, never has. So, up top we've got who's responsible for this. Then we compare it to the actual all your base. That tiny little blue bump is who's responsible for this. So, what have we learned? That declaring something, declaring that something should be a meme is always going to cause a backlash. People love behaving like flocks of birds or schools of fish taking cues from one another directly, but they hate being treated like sheep led around by some self-righteous fucking shepherd. When you say, let's uh, look at this new meme we made, people are hearing, I'm telling you what you should think is funny or cool. When you say, look at what we think is, Look at what we found, they're going to hear that we've got our ear to the ground and we're listening to you to find out what you think is funny or cool. 
So uh, it's a well-known fact that incorporating memes into your content can boost its popularity, but if you're going to reference a meme and you don't know its backstory, those who do know will know that you don't. Don't be that guy who doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. A lot of people who still think that a meme is just a funny picture of a cat with some words on it ask, what will you do when we run out of memes? Well, human beings are social animals. We imitate each other. We make parodies. We make satire. The web is becoming more social every day. We will never run out of memes.